Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Giovanni Valderas. I am the exhibitions manager at the Fort Worth Community Arts Center. And today I am joined by Tony Wright. He currently has a show up called Sculpture and Drawings by Tony uh, in the Marlene Spencer Foundation Gallery. The show closes on April 10th, so please come out and check it. Anthony, I'm sorry, Tony, uh, <laughs> please introduce yourself to us and share a little bit about who you are. Sure. Uh, Tony or Anthony, either one works for me. Uh, my name is Tony Wright. Uh, I'm an artist. Uh, I got my uh, BFA at Heron School of Art in Indianapolis, Indiana, and then came down to Fort Worth to go to uh, TCU where I got my MFA uh, several, several years ago, a long time ago. Uh, since then, I've been uh, steadily making art and uh, uh, have a studio here uh, on the west side of Fort Worth, not really within city limits, but I, I'm out in Parker County uh, where I have a studio space where I can make some larger pieces and uh, uh, make some noise out in the, and my neighbors don't bother me too much and I don't bother the neighbors too much. So. Well, great. Well, uh, you know, the show is, is such a monumental show. I mean, not only in the, in the works itself, but just the way it's displayed. And, and I was wondering how long did, did it take for you to map out the show that you wanted and to accumulate the works? Was, was this something that was in the making for a while? Uh, it kind of was, yeah. You know, we, we did postpone it for a year. So, but everything was made prior to that postponement. Uh, I was ready to go uh, before the pandemic hit. Um, but, you know, I think the earliest piece might be 2015. I, I can't remember exactly. Um, so they were sort of made in, in groups. Uh, there's a, a group of drawings that was done while I had a residency in France uh, one year. There's a, a larger uh, format group of drawings that was done uh, in uh, New York outside of uh, New York City at a resident residency I did uh, in conjunction with the Art Students League of New York. Um, and then the the sculpture, you know, I, I make little pieces and, and to, uh, to sort of work out some ideas. And then uh, as I get more comfortable with what I think I want to do, I blow them up to larger format works. Um, and in the show, you'll see a, a range of sizes. Uh, so going from little tabletop pieces uh, to pedestal works to works that are actually more suited for, uh, you know, uh, museum environments or, or corporate environments or something like that, uh, that actually sit on the floor. Uh, so, you know, it comes about uh, over a period of time and I, I tend to work in, uh, uh, series as well so that that kind of defines uh, certain works you know i i was you know taking a look at your your kind of artist statement and you describe your work as very intuitive mm -hmm. and so how difficult was it for you to get to that place of freedom mm -hmm. um in your practice was this something that that took a while or or is this something that you immediately gravitated towards it, it kind of took a while. Um, you know, I, I had to develop the skills that I have, uh, whether it's welding or, you know, the different aspects of fabricating pieces. And it takes, uh, I would say, you know, years to get comfortable enough that I can walk out into the studio and say, okay, let me take a piece of steel and I'll start working it. And to where it really feels like with the small pieces, um, I'm actually drawing them in, in my head. You know, it's as easy for me to, to do them as it is for, to draw them. Um, that being said, the, the drawings don't represent uh, actual works of sculpture. Uh, and I think of the smaller works as sketches for uh, larger pieces, although they're finished pieces in their own right. Um, and some may never get to be bigger pieces. Uh, but there, uh, you know, it, it does take time to get that comfortable with, with your skills in your back pocket, 
so to speak, um, to walk into the studio and say, yeah, this is, you know, I've got some time and this is the time I have and, and this is what I want to build. Uh, and then, uh, like I've said, it, it is intuitive. So once I start a piece, they can change uh, dramatically from what I originally started. I, I see a relationship and I think, oh, you know, this, this is interesting and why don't I, why don't I pursue that and, and see where that takes me. Wow, that's, that's so great to hear because, you know, it, a lot of times I think artists feel like they, they have to have it planned out, you know, before they execute. And, and, and for me that there's, there's a certain playfulness and, and, and it makes just making the work more fun for me, you know, if we just sure. go at it. Yeah. 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 Um, so it's interesting because kind of playing off of that, you know, I was going to ask like how much does your drawings inform the sculpture, but I guess not much then. Not, yeah, really not, not a whole lot. Um, and the, the drawings are, are really kind of reflections of um, sort of what I'm seeing around me. Um, and it's just about mark making and, and sort of visual relationships um, through making the marks. Um, there's times when I look at the drawings and I go, oh, you know, that's, that's something that could be worked into a, a sculpture, but by and large, they're, they're separate um, uh, works. You know, they, they live on their own, basically. Yeah. You know, just kind of observing your work and, you know, your objects seem to take on a certain formal and organic landscape attribute, mm -hmm. but the material seems to complement each other, but also compete with each other aesthetically. And I was wondering if you can kind of elaborate on that process. And I'm thinking about one particular work called Fallen and, and how you know, the material is just like, I, I feel that, that there is this kind of skirmish happening, but also uh -huh. complementing. Uh -huh. That particular piece uh, came about in, uh, in New York and it came about after walking through these woods um, near this residency I had. And I kept seeing these trees that were fallen together. And, you know, when one tree falls, it often doesn't have a clear path on its way down. So it can hit another tree and take another tree out with it. Um, and so I, I kind of played with that idea of two pieces that were intertwined. Um, and that, that was brought about in the steel. Um, and then the, the wood portion of that uh, particular work uh, actually came from a, a wood pile that was uh, there at the residency that was firewood that you know had been stacked up and I cleaned up some of it and, and processed it enough to to get some nice looking uh, sections of, of wood and kind of married that together thinking well you know this is the the steel represents the fallen trees the wood is the actual product of the fallen tree uh, it was kind of a way to uh, I don't know to to see that you know things don't happen in a vacuum and that when one tree falls, uh, it affects another tree and that uh, that process also doesn't go to waste. It, it produces this, you know, gorgeous little piece of wood as well. Yeah, yeah that, that wood piece is just amazing, the, the wood grain and the color. Mm -hmm. and, and I wonder, are you always on the lookout for like material when you're just encountered your daily life? You sure. Know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh I, I i do that and um does, you know, does, go ahead I'm, yeah, I'm sorry uh does, does the material have to speak to you in a sense or or you just say wow that 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 i can make i can make that work it kind of has to talk to me um you know I, sometimes i i i gather materials and i you know I, Aesthetically, I think they're beautiful. And that may be as far as it goes. Uh, there's, you know, in my studio, I've got lots of little chunks of wood that may never get worked into a piece, but I like looking at them. Mm. Um, but then there's others where I think, well, no, I know that is gonna be part of a piece. I don't know how yet, but I know it's gonna work in somewhere, yeah. Yeah, I, I love that. I love when there's like this raw material and you know it's 
it's going to be something one day, but you just haven't, you know, that's right. It. Yeah. 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 I, it's, it's just a great feeling to have. Yeah. And, and so, say, you know, they go, well, when are you going to, you know, do something with this piece? And I said, you know, when it's time, I, mm -hmm. I don't I have no idea when it's going to, when it's going to hit, but I know it will some point. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. I, I think that's such a great, like lesson you know just like to not rush the material and let the material speak when it when it's ready absolutely yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's it's a luxury you know it really is <laughs> yeah so one last question mm -hmm. you know an established artist artist like yourself is there any advice that you give emerging artists what any piece of advice moving forward you know to, sure. to have a sustainable you know long career like as yourself Sure. Uh, the important thing is don't stop making work. Um, don't think that you can pick up something or, or, or stop and pick up again next month or next week or something. Make something, you know, don't wait for the inspiration. Go out and make something. Um, you don't need a big studio. You don't need a dedicated space. You need a sketchbook and a pencil. Um, you know, make it happen yourself and, and don't wait around for someone to, to make it happen for you. So uh, the important thing is, is the work, uh, always be working. Yeah. Great advice. And, and that's <laughs> something that, that I have tried to live by because I'm always afraid that if mm -hmm. I stop, um, yeah. then the work stops and I don't ever pick it back up again. Exactly. Yeah. I, there is that fear. <laughs> it's a healthy fear to have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've, all, we've all seen it happen. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, I see it all the time. Like, you know, it's, it's uh, having children. How do yeah. you pay for their braces? Um, it's sure. working longer hours and sure. you know, it's just all life stuff catches up. But I think if yeah. you have to make a priority, right. You have to make the yeah. work priority, but yeah. So yeah. Um, one last thing before we go, mm -hmm. If people wanted to find out more information about you, do you have a website or Instagram? That I they do. Uh, uh, my website is www.anthonywright.com, all one word, Anthony Wright. Um, my Instagram, I'm out there on Instagram, and I think it's uh, Anthony Wright uh, Fine Art. Uh, I think it's Anthony Wright, sorry, <laughs> I'll get this right. Uh, Anthony underscore right underscore fine underscore art uh, okay. is how you'll find me. Uh, I'm on Facebook as well uh, with a Facebook page of Anthony Wright. Uh, nice, nice. Well, well, Tony, I can't thank you enough for joining us today. It was such a great conversation that we had. This is what I love about these artist talks because they are so informative, but also kind of convenient because of Zoom. But there's always technical challenges. But sure. Uh, sure. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you uh, giving me the opportunity and, and for the uh, Community Arts Center to give me this opportunity. It was a great, uh, great space to show in. And, and uh, I really can't thank you guys enough for allowing me to do that. Oh, yeah. Most welcome. Most welcome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, everyone, please come out and check out Tony's show. It's up till April 10th. Uh, until then, we'll see you all later. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>